Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how alkanes are separated by fractional distillation. In the last video we started looking at alkanes. Remember that alkanes are saturated hydrocarbons with the general formula CnH2n plus 2. Now alkanes are extremely useful compounds. Firstly alkanes are used extensively as fuels and we're going to be looking at the combustion of alkanes in a later video. Secondly, Alkanes are used as the starting materials for the production of a whole range of organic molecules, including pharmaceuticals. Now we find alkanes in crude oil, and I'm showing you a picture of crude oil here. Crude oil is a fossil fuel and is formed underground from the remains of plants and animals. Over millions of years, heat and pressure convert the chemicals in these remains into crude oil. And because we're using crude oil at a faster rate than it can form, crude oil is considered non-renewable. Now crude oil is a mixture of straight chain and branch chain alkanes along with other chemicals such as sulfur. But in order to use these alkanes we need to separate them. We do this by a process called fractional distillation. And fractional distillation is carried out in tall fractionating columns like the one I'm showing you here. Ok now in order to understand fractional distillation we need to look at the boiling point of alkanes. Remember that alkane molecules are attracted to each other by intermolecular forces. And because alkanes are non-polar molecules, these intermolecular forces are London forces. Now a key fact that you need to learn is that alkanes with a longer carbon chain have a higher boiling point than those with a shorter carbon chain. Longer chain alkanes have a greater surface area for the formation of London forces compared to shorter chain alkanes. This means that it takes more energy to break the London forces in longer chain alkanes. So longer chain alkanes have a higher boiling point compared to shorter chain alkanes. Now there is a second key idea you need to appreciate in order to understand fractional distillation. I'm showing you here the alkane octane. Octane boils at 126 degrees Celsius. If we take liquid octane and heat it to 126 degrees Celsius it will boil, converting from a liquid to a gas. Now a key idea you need to understand is that if we take octane as a gas and cool it to below its boiling point, the gas will condense back to the liquid form. Now I've used octane as an example but this applies to any alkane. So in order to understand fractional distillation you need to learn these two key points. Firstly, longer chain alkanes have a higher boiling point than shorter chain alkanes. Secondly, if we take an alkane as a gas and cool it to below its boiling point, it will condense to a liquid. Ok, so let's take a look at the stages of fractional distillation of crude oil and it's very important that you learn these stages. Firstly, the crude oil is heated in a furnace. The temperature of the furnace is hot enough to boil a lot of the alkanes in the crude oil, converting them to a gas. Next, the crude oil vapours and liquid pass into the fractionating column. The column is hotter at the bottom and becomes progressively cooler going upwards. Now the crude oil vapours make their way up the column. At different levels in the column we have collecting trays. These trays have bubble caps which allow vapours to pass upwards. As each alkane moves up the column, at some point it will reach a temperature which is cooler than its boiling point. Now the alkane condenses back to a liquid and passes out of the column. The alkanes with shorter carbon chains have lower boiling points, so these are collected near the top of the column. Longer chain alkanes have higher boiling points, so these are collected towards the bottom. And alkanes with very long chains form a thick liquid called bitumen, and this is collected from the bottom of the column. Now, not all of the alkanes will condense. Very short chain alkanes, such as methane and ethane, are collected from the top of the column as gases. Now, one thing you need to bear in mind is that fractional distillation does not separate each individual alkane. Instead, each fraction contains a number of alkanes with similar boiling points. To separate each individual alkane would require further rounds of fractional distillation. Ok, so hopefully now you can describe how alkanes are separated by fractional distillation. 